While not as exciting as powerful top spins and smashes, very few shots will be as important to your development as learning a good block. Blocks are short strokes used to control your opponent's attacking shots when you don't have time to move into position and attack yourself. Blocks can be passive, active, they can be with spin or without spin. There are seven different blocks and we're going to work on each of them today. The control block. This is one of the first strokes that most players learn. The stroke is played early in the bounce, there is little acceleration of the racket during the stroke, and the feeling is one of carrying the ball. The hand is firm during the stroke and the goals for this stroke are to control your opponent's speed and to place the return in a difficult position for the opponent. Your racket angle will be as closed as much as needed to control the amount of topspin from your opponent. The control block is often the primary block that most people use. The next block we're going to learn is the drop shot block. This blocking stroke is very similar to the control block. The ball is contacted early in the ascending stage but this time with a relaxed grip. At impact you want to feel like you're absorbing the speed of the ball and may even move the hand slightly backwards at impact to help with this. This is require an active handed contact and your racket angle will depend on the amount of spin on the ball. The block is often used by attacking players to disrupt the opponent's timing and also to force the opponent to move forward. Our next block is the active block. The best way to think of this stroke is actually a smash block. Unlike the smooth carry of the control block, this stroke uses smash touch with maximum acceleration achieved at contact with the ball. Imagine you're driving a nail when contacting the ball for the active block. Contact should be made at the top of the bounce with a firm grip and both the wrist and forearm are used for this stroke. The purpose of this stroke is to score the point outright or to push your opponent back from the table. Next up is the control at far distance block. This is really an emergency stroke played away from the table with the purpose of gaining time for your next stroke and just to make a safe return of a powerful attacking shot. The block is executed as the ball is descending with a controlled carry of the ball. This stroke needs to be very well placed as it will have very little speed or spin. This type of block is most used by mid-distance topspin players to simply put the ball back on the table. Now we move on to blocks with spin. First up is the backspin block, sometimes also called the chop block. The ball is played in the ascending stage with a closed racket. There is negative acceleration to contact and the racket is moved downwards and around the ball, much like peeling an orange. This requires a loose grip and a very active hand at contact. The purpose of this block is to make your opponent play the ball into the net or to disrupt his timing and force an error. The top spin block. In recent years, this block stroke has become increasingly popular because it blends so well with the dominant modern style of counter looping. The best way to think of this stroke is if you are dealing cards. The stroke requires a very active and relaxed hand with contact made in the ascending stage of the bounce with a closed racket. You will feel the ball sink deep into the sponge as the racket is moving through the ball's center of gravity with a closed face. The acceleration of the stroke occurs before impact and the axis of rotation is your wrist, not your forearm. Our last block is the lateral block, often called a side spin block. Contact for this stroke is in the ascending stage and your wrist will either be broken or extended to contact behind the center of the ball and then move your racket to the right or to the left. You'll be touching the ball with spin touch and the acceleration of the racket will happen just before contact and come from your hand. The purpose of this block is to direct your opponent's returns to a location or to force your opponent to move a greater distance. As we have seen, there are seven variations of blocks. I highly recommend that all players learn at least two or three of these variations and practice mixing them together so you can force errors from your opponent. Blocking may not be glamorous, but good blocks can take you a long way in the sport of table tennis.